Hey everyone. So uh, I'm here today doing a live with uh, Dr. Walter Longo, who is actually one of the most amazing scientists in the world. He has uh, done a lot of research on longevity and on fasting. Um, and he's uh, got a new book coming out, which is called The Longevity Diet. So um, I think this is a really exciting book. It's got a lot of really interesting information. He's done uh, a lot of research, and he's basically a world-renowned scientist. So really excited to have you here today, Dr. Longo, and uh, let everyone see, you know, uh, more about your book and learn about what you're doing. Well, great to be on your show. Great. So, um, so you do have a new uh, book coming out right now. Um, I think it just came out recently, and it's called The Longevity Diet, um, which is, is a really, you know, uh, interesting concept now. And I think a lot of it is uh, based around uh, the concept of fasting, which is actually a really, really popular topic now. So can you tell me, like, what, just the basics about your book and, you know, what you've learned about, about aging? Yes, so the book is really uh, the result of 30 years of, of research uh, by myself, and uh, but not just myself. Of course, there is a lot of hundreds of citations in the book. I try to make it so that people don't have to read the citations, and uh, but if people want, uh, they can they can go and read the original article. And so, half of the book is about everyday diet, and the other half is about uh, these fasting and fasting mimicking diets, and how they together can be applied to uh, regulating aging, what we call treat aging, and also what I call juventology. So how do you keep an organism young more than, more so than worrying about how the ages, uh, how do you keep somebody young uh, for longer? So until we were 40 or 50, most people don't, don't get any diseases and they, they, they do very well. But then at a certain point, what I call this juventology program ends and then the problems start, and uh, and that's what we really focusing on. Um, a, how do you delay that process uh, or postpone it? And, and B, how do you actually even bring back people using these fasting mimicking diets and uh, um, and uh, reduce uh, uh, cellular damage so that you can go after you know high cholesterol, high blood pressure, uh, high systemic inflammation, uh, high fasting glucose. Uh, and risk factor for cancer, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, that's so, so interesting. And um, I was reading that you came about to, to learn a lot of this information from working on uh, basically uh, unicellular organisms. Is that where you started to uh, learn about this? Yeah, actually, I started first with uh, UCLA with Roy Walford, who was uh, really focusing on humans and mice, and Roy was a, a medical doctor. Um, but then I figured out that this was, we really were interested in the early 90s and, uh, about the genes that control aging. We figured that if we don't know what the genes are, we're just going to be always confused and lost. So I went back, I changed the department, I went back to biochemistry and looked at yeast and bacteria, actually. So that was my focus until I identified the, what I call the, the protein pathway and the sugar pathway. Uh, these are both driving the, accelerating the aging process. One is called Taurus cyskinase. The other one is called PKA, and so when you have a lot of sugar and a lot of proteins and amino acids, uh, the, the, the organism, many organisms age faster, and we suspect that this is also true for, for human beings. Ah, that's so interesting. And, um, you know, I was recently reading about different kinds of amino acids and how they affect insulin and some of the, those growth kinds of pathways. Is there any difference between different kinds of amino acids and how... Uh, they impact the process of aging? Yeah, absolutely. So, for example, methionine uh, is known to be a major driver of IGF-1 and growth factor uh, and growth hormone. And, uh, and so if you have high levels of methionine, you have high levels of IGF-1. Um, and now we know from mouse studies, but also human studies, our own human studies, we've been following a population in Ecuador that is deficient in IGF-1. And they seem to be very much protected from cancer, diabetes, and also cognitive decline, matching the mouse data, by the way. And uh, so methionine is really pushing this, uh, and not just methionine, but methionine is the major one. The other amino acid that is really 
uh, driving one of the, the aging genes uh, uh, is leucine. Leucine activates something called TOR, and TOR, um, which we had originally identified in yeast, the TOR cis-canase pathway, um, the, uh, is very central. Now it's recognized as probably the most uh, potent uh, uh, aging accelerator. Hmm, that's so interesting. And uh, so there's something that happens, you know, like I think I think a lot of people have tried to fast and, you know, there's certain types of different kinds of fasting that people do. There's like intermittent fasting, there's water and juice fast. And I think you're, the kind of fasting that you're, you're doing here is actually very unique because it's mimicking fasting, but it's for a, cert, a, a long period of time. So can you sort of tell us or tell everyone who's watching how that's different from something like intermittent fasting or other types of fasting? Yeah, yeah. First of all, so I, I, I hate the word intermittent fasting uh, because it's kind of like saying intermittent eating. You know, it doesn't mean anything, right? Uh, you, could, you could be not eating for two hours between coffee and dinner, and, right. uh, and that's intermittent fasting, right? So it could be yeah. 30 days, right? So you, you see how, you know, it, it just doesn't make any sense. So I think hopefully soon enough we'll start saying, uh, uh, identifying what we mean exactly, right? Uh, so, for example, one of the things that I talk about in my book is time-restricted feeding, uh, which is, you know, how many hours per day you eat, right? And, and of course, that also determines one of the intermittent fasting is how many hours you fast for, right? So if you eat from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., you've done, now done 12 hours of time-restricted feeding. Um, now, very few people know that, uh, I mean, people imagine that if you, go mu- if you eat much longer than that, you have a problem, uh, and that's true. And, and Sachin Panda and others have shown that. Uh, many few, few people know that if you fast for much longer than 12 hours, you also have problems. And the problems can, can range from uh, gallstone formation. It can, it, you can reach actually almost twofold the risk of developing gallstones and then needing a, to, your gallbladder to be removed. Not a pleasant yeah. thing to happen. That's and not uh, <laughs> yeah, not fun. And another thing that has now uh, been shown over and over is skipping breakfast is associated with increased cardiovascular disease, increased overall mortality. There's now at least three studies showing that. Um, mm-hmm. So now, uh, for most people, going 16 hours of fasting means skipping breakfast. So you know, these are some of the things that I think are important to know about in different types of intermittent fasting. So how is it different from what we do? Well, mm-hmm. it's, it's completely different. You know, We have something the last five days, uh, and it's a fasting mimicking diet. So it's equivalent of, let's say, Water only fasting for about four days, right? And 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 the the why is it important uh, to go five days and not much longer and not much shorter? Well, first of all, you know, uh, arguing with the intermittent fasting uh, to get into a ketogenic mode, in a natural ketogenic mode, where your body really starts breaking down the abdominal, the visceral fat, the the, the fat that is so important for inflammation, for in, insulin resistance, diabetes, etc. It takes you know, a couple of days to really be in a full fat breakdown mode, right? So if you if you fast for 12 hours or 18 hours or whatever, you're, you're not even going to reach that. You, you may, you know, have a little bit of it, but not very much. Um, the other thing that we've shown is that uh, to activate stem cells, you first need to break the system down, right? So mm-hmm. so I always use the analogy of a, of a wood-burning train and basically say, you know, uh, if, if a train is running out of fuel, it's like fasting, right? A, so if it's running out of fuel, doesn't have any more fuel, uh, it can, uh, a wood burning train could use its own chairs, its own walls made of wood uh, mm-hmm. to, to get to the next train station. And, uh, and now, you know, once you get to the next train station, then you can rebuild, right? That's what the body does. You're starving, it starts breaking down, and it seems to like to go after like precancer cells, cancer cells, autoimmune cells, damaged cells first. We're not qu- uh, clear why, but we have shown that it can do that. So then now you, your body shrinks. It, it, it destroys all these damaged cells first. It also destroys normal cells, but uh, mm-hmm. some of them being old, uh, probably the older ones. Uh, mm-hmm. And then it turns on stem cells, and then uh, when you refeed, the stem cells give rise to uh, new cells, and that's why I think this uh, five-day fasting mimicking diet uh, works very well. Now, if you went much mm. f- uh, further than that, then you could get in trouble because 
you know, you now you get into a more dangerous zone of fasting outside of a clinic for more than five days. Probably not yeah. a good idea, even if you use the fasting mimicking diet kit. Uh, if you go uh, less than that, as I just mentioned, a lot of these uh, the processes don't occur because you don't have enough time. Mm-hmm. So you've studied like this exact time frame is, is just the right amount of time to induce that process where you're getting rid of those cells that are, are damaged and helping to regenerate new cells. And a lot of it, it's quite interesting uh, for a lot of um, the followers of this page uh, have polycystic ovary syndrome, and we've been learning that this condition is actually linked to uh, the ability to survive famines and be able to conserve energy. And a lot of the time, there's an a, additional excess storage of energy. So it, it's very interesting to know that you know this kind this pathway is so easily turned on when there's less calories that are available in the environment and then our bodies go through that uh survival mechanism it seems like something that's very much in the genes from from a very long long time ago so that's that's super interesting and one other thing yeah. i learned recently uh from uh joseph uh, antoon who's who's one of uh who works with uh, you, he was saying basically there was a study uh, that they did on mice that showed actual reversal of uh, the ty- type two diabetes and regeneration of new pancreatic cells. Is that uh, is that something that you can tell us a little bit more about? Yes. Yeah, so uh, last year we published a, a paper that looked both at type one and type two diabetes, and uh, so of course for type two diabetes we shown effects on insulin uh, sensitivity. Uh, but we're more interested in the pancreatic regeneration. So we were interested in that process that I just described the, of uh, damaging the pancreas of mice and then you know, sh- shrinking the, the pancreas or at least the level of islet cells um, uh, and then uh, see can we re-expand this and uh, regenerate uh, beta cells that can make insulin. And so that's what we did. So we we, we uh, destroyed the, the pancreas enough so, so they didn't make any more insulin. So we, get, we gave them essentially type 1 diabetes. Or we did that also with type 2. We pushed the type 2 diabetes uh, mice to the uh, limit so that then the pancreas becomes uh, damaged and doesn't make any more insulin. So either way, uh, then we started the fasting mimicking diet cycles and we showed that the, the pancreas uh, turns on an embryonic fetal development-like program, right? So the, all these genes that normally you only see turned down in, in a, all, many of them, hundreds, uh, in, during embryonic development are getting turned down. So that's where we can tell that this is not just uh, so, you know, some minor change in the pancreas. This is really reprogramming the pancreas to be ready to generate a new pancreas. Wow. Um, now, you know, I'm exaggerating here. You're not like making a, new, a completely new pancreas, but right. you say, certainly... You're certainly uh, going from no insulin to normal insulin. So it's yeah. making enough uh, beta cells uh, to completely restore uh, the ability of the, of the mice to make insulin. Now, in human cells, we also try with type 1 diabetes cells, and, and, uh, uh, and this seems to be able to uh, uh, help the, the uh, non-insulin generating beta cells from human uh, to make insulin again. So interesting, and now uh, soon enough um, we'll start clinical trials on on both uh, type 2 and type 1 diabetes. Wow, that's just amazing. It's something that's supposed to be actually impossible that um, you're kind of tapping into like some of our oldest mechanisms in our genes to, you know, help improve. Because I always say it's easier to work with what your body has and try to push it, push against it, you know. So. Absolutely, yeah. So this is as old as bacteria. So it's billions of years old. If you take bacteria and you starve them, and this is, was my original observation about yeast and bacteria, you starve them completely, and they live longer, and they are resistant to everything. And and you, you it's very counterintuitive, but it tells you there is something as old as organisms themselves that is able to uh, protect. Um, and uh, now it turns out not just protect, but also regenerate, uh, both cellularly, but also inside of a cell. We didn't talk about that. We haven't published on that yet. But certainly, we, we know autophagy goes on during fasting. And so, you know, this, the inside of a cell. So, for example, non-dividing cells like neurons or, or um, uh, cardiomyocytes, um, they, uh, we suspect that there is also a replenishment and resetting within the cells. Wow. 
that's so interesting. Um, just to think about all the, you know, the different kinds of cells that that could work on and all the different ways that that could really help us fight all different types of diseases. It's, it's amazing. Um, and you have a kit, basically, which, because obviously it's probably pretty hard to do this uh, on your own and figure out what to eat and, you know, um, but you guys have a, a product that um, is available through clinics and I think also now available maybe directly. And can you tell us more about that? Yes. Uh, yeah, I don't have anything because I'm, you know, I'm a professor at university, but there's a company that I that I started uh, some years ago, and um, I all my shares will go to the uh, foundation called Create Cures uh, the Foundation, uh, and whose scope is to uh, accelerate uh, this complementary intervention that can help patients, uh, you know, do better or much better. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so the the company is called Lelnutra. And the kit is called Prolon, and the idea was Pro Longevity, Pro uh, P R O L O N, and uh, and you can look it up at uh, Prolon F M D Fasting Making Diet dot com. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, the idea was to to just give people what we tested clinically in a, in a trial that we published uh, in two thousand seventeen on a hundred patients, uh, uh, showing that um, that uh, three cycles of this five day uh, Prolon F M D. Uh, reduced uh, uh, cholesterol, triglyceride, blood pressure, uh, fasting glucose, uh, C-reactive protein, IGF-1, etc. So it seems to be very, very um, effective in uh, uh, reprogramming the body into being younger and healthier. And uh, um, so that's what, that's what it looks like. And now we're, you know, we're going to do large studies. We're doing them uh, in cancer. Um, and we're about to start it with uh, uh, multiple sclerosis. Uh, this is a seven-day fasting mimicking diet. Cancer is a four-day fasting mimicking diet. Um, again, diabetes, Alzheimer. We're about to start. We just got funded in Europe to do an Alzheimer trial. So, um, so I think that um, uh, hopefully, uh, I think if uh, if this is successful in one third of the application that we're going after. Um, it, it will be an amazing success. So let's 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 hope for a third, uh, to, third a thirty-three percent success rate. Yeah. Yeah, that's just that's just phenomenal. So I really look for it. I'll be following your research for sure and sharing it with uh, with my audience because I know a lot of them are really interested in this. And it's definitely a lot easier to fast for for five days than to do uh, really complicated long time other types of fasting and you know anytime anytime that you have a, a severe condition you should always ask your doctor before uh implementing any kind of program uh, any type of fasting um so just always uh you know do that uh your doctor knows your your health the best um yeah so i just want to thank you so much for uh for doing this interview um it's been really great to be able to ask you these questions and i've been reading a lot of your research for a while so yeah, I just uh, wish you all the best with, with what you're doing. Well, I think it's amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, and hopefully this can help your uh, your audience a little bit. Absolutely. All right. Have a great night. Okay, you too. Bye. Bye.